Hey there folks, I'm Blunty, and about two years ago I reviewed this, the Pentax Q, the world's smallest interchangeable lens system camera, and I called that review my new favouritest camera ever! And it was then, and indeed remains to this day, one of my very favourite cameras. And over the past two years it has found itself in my bag quite regularly. I loved it for its DSLR level control and interface, its great build quality, its amazingly tiny size which has meant that I can carry the camera and several lenses in my pockets, which ranges from impractical to impossible with any other system camera out there. I loved it for its surprisingly good image quality, especially considering it's a comparatively small sensor on board. But most of all I loved it for its ability to remind me how much fun and inspiration there is to be had from wandering the world camera in hand. The Pentax Q saw a model refresh in the Q10 in 2012 which was basically the exact same camera but with a polycarbonate shell replacing the original's full metal body construction, which was done mainly to make it more affordable. But this year came the Q7. Don't ask me why this new camera has a lower number than the Q10, I have no idea, it doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. But here's the thing, the Q7 has kept almost everything I adore about the original Q and made a couple of things about the system even better. Mainly, the Q7 pumps the sensor size up another notch, while still remaining fully compatible with all of the system's lenses. The body is polycarbonate instead of metal, so the handling doesn't quite feel as old school premium as the original did. Thankfully though, the lens mount is still carved from a chunk of metal, so that's nice and strong, and the build quality in general feels very solid with an excellent fit and finish. And the ergonomics and the control layout are all still bewilderingly comfortable to use. I mean, I've got big, chunky man paws, and I can operate the Q7 as easily as I can any double-fisted DSLR. In fact, the Q7 controls exactly the same as a full-size Pentax DSLR does. It even has a standard hot shoe on board for throwing some flash around if the on-camera flash doesn't get you where you need to be. Although, pretty much any flash unit on top of this tiny camera is pretty hilarious looking. The menu system is basically identical to the other Qs, a couple of things have been moved about slightly but it's still as clean and easy and fast and efficient as the original was and indeed it's basically identical to the interface in Pentax's pro level DSLRs too. Pentax's quick menu remains as one of the cleanest and best in the industry. And my favourite feature of the Q is kept alive here as well, that being the custom mode dial on the front. With this quick dial you can choose what feature set you'd like fast access to. Perhaps you'd like to instantly switch your aspect ratios around, or flick between manual and autofocus, or switch on the focus peaking, or even instantly engage the lens's built-in neutral density filters. Yes, it has neutral density filters built in. But for me, I use it to set up four completely user customizable image processing presets and filter combinations. And this combination tends to shift a bit as I play and experiment, but right now, let's see what I've got. I've got a high contrast monochrome setting for rich, punchy black and white shooting, a customized vibrant color mode for some pop, I've got a more gentle black and white mode for smooth tones and a wide dynamic range, and a cross processing emanation for some vintage color shifting going on. But as I said, these can be almost any combination of color modes and filters you like. You can even tweak and customize these combinations to your preference, fiddling with the saturation, the hue, high or low key adjustment, contrast and sharpness until your heart's content. The point I'm trying to kind of drive home here is that while it may look like a toy or some purse-friendly happer-snapper point-and-shoot, especially if you choose one of the brighter custom body colour options from the, and get this, from the 120 different colour combinations, the Q7 is not to be underestimated, and especially not to be dismissed by the photo snobs out there just because it packs a smaller sensor. And on that sensor, by the way, it's the same one that lives inside Pentax's Compact MX1, which I also reviewed and was so impressed by I now own one of my own. And it's a sensor that, as you've been seeing, is capable of delivering wonderfully organic tonality and rich colours, and although the plastic shelled lenses for the system feel a bit, well, plasticky, the glass and optical engineering inside those lenses is obviously more than capable of delivering some crispy detail and even some very lovely bouquet. But it's that quick dial more than any other feature which for me encourages playfulness and experimentation. Everything you're seeing in this review is right out of the camera, untouched by any external edit. It's all been done on board. Although that said, the raw files from the Q7 do offer you loads of room if you do want to kick some pixels around on your computer. But more often than not, I just shoot in camera and team it all up with a Flash Air Wi-Fi enabled SD card, or indeed an iFi card, which the Q7 will support natively if you're curious. There's a iFi menu built right in. 
Now, one area where small sensor cameras often have a bit of difficulty is in low light. Small sensors mean small photo sites, which can often mean a low sensitivity. But the original Q was fairly decent in that regard, and the new upgraded sensor in the Q7 is even better still. It's probably at least a stop, stop and a half better than the Q was originally, and uh, well, I've got no problems with it at all. You can use it easily up to ISO 3200 without any worries in the world. 6400 is still pretty clean. After that, you get into the boosted territory where it starts to get a bit noisy. And all that said, I never ran into any instances where I couldn't get away doing handheld. Now, the video mode, well, like almost all Pentex cameras, isn't, isn't awe-inspiring. Although, to be fair, it has to be said that in the last 18 months or so, Pentex have gotten much, much, much better at video. And you do get a choice of frame rates here. You've got 24, 25, and 30 frames per second, all at full 1080p. But let's be fair, this isn't the camera you're likely to be shooting a wedding video on, or something terribly serious. So the video performance is, well, I'd call it more than adequate. Just remember to turn off the in-body shake reduction, because while it works great for stills, it does get a bit goofy and wibbly in video mode. Many of the effects and filters can even be used in real time for video too, although with some of the more computationally complex ones you may see a drop in frame rate, but the Q7 does do this much, much better than the original Q did, so there's some extra room for playtime there too. And like I mentioned before, I almost always shoot my Q with a Wi-Fi enabled memory card on board so it can instantly squirt any good shots across to my phone and share them right away. And for me, that shoot, play and share mentality is kind of the whole point of owning this camera. Sure, you're unlikely to ever take it on a professional shoot, but for a camera that reminds you of the pure, simple, wondrous joy of photography, there really is nothing else out there like it. This is the camera I reach for when I feel down. This is the camera I reach for when I need to find my muse. This is the camera I reach for when I want a license to screw around for a bit. Like I said at the beginning of this video, this entire system is just two years old, and there's currently eight lenses in the system lineup, with more in the pipeline. Pentex are actively developing more lenses for the system. But the stuff you've seen in this review are mostly from the kit lens, the Pentex 02, which is a standard zoom, and on the Q7's larger sensor has a full frame equivalent field of view of 23 to 70 millimeters f2.8 to 4.5. Also, the Pentex 01 Prime lens, which is a 40mm equivalent and a very bright f1.9. And the Pentex 06, my favourite lens of the system, which is an f2.8 constant aperture, 70 to 209mm zoom. So, while I do miss the full metal body of the original Q, which has served me extremely well for the past two years, the Q7, with its better and bigger sensor and its extra processing grunt, have edged it out for me. It's a really enjoyable tactile experience to use this camera from hand to result it's it's just rewarding is the only word that comes to mind the q7 has become a permanent resident in my personal collection so now i guess i'll just have to call the pentex q system as a whole some of my favoritest cameras ever thanks for watching i am blunty and we'll catch you next time oh and yes by the way i love that my new q7 has a bruce lee in game of death color scheme going on and i guess like with bruce lee you'd be living in a dangerous world if you judge it just by its size be like water my friends be like water